Around 1900, there was an uprising in China called the Boxer Rebellion. A large group of Chinese peasants set out to kill all Chinese Christians and expel foreigners from the country. They used traditional weapons and set fire to several cities. They performed a ritual that invoked several different deities from the theater to possess them in battle. They believed these rituals made them bulletproof. As a result, eight major Western countries plus Japan invaded. In the process, these foreign soldiers looted the imperial palace. Many Chinese are still angry about this. At the time, the Chinese were so humiliated that they set out to obliterate their own martial, religious, and theatrical traditions. But martial artists fought back against this movement by insisting that they could and would completely separate martial arts from its theatrical and religious origins. Thus, a purified form of martial arts most people practice today was created. However, without the original theatrical and religious context, martial arts cannot be fully appreciated or understood. This martial art is called Chen style Tai Chi Chuan. It's the oldest style of Tai Chi. But what else is it? What purpose did it originally serve? Notice that this movement is very specific and exacting. Was it a form of theater? Did it have a religious function? This movement mimes grinding the elixir of immortality and then drinking it. This is mime for butterfly. It's used extensively in Chinese opera traditions to mean waking from a dream. The ancient Taoist Zhuangzi dreamt he was a butterfly, and the butterfly dreamt he was Zhuangzi, who was dreaming that he was a butterfly, and when he awoke, he couldn't be sure if he was, in fact, Zhuangzi or a butterfly. In China, India, and Japan, there are three types of mime. Illusion mime, which most people in the West are familiar with, mudras, which are magical symbols made with the hands, and image mime, which is a form of sign language to people familiar with the culture. For instance, this movement in North Indian classical dance means opening the heart in all directions, like a lotus flower. This movement in Tai Chi Chuan probably means opening the Dantian in all directions. But it also looks like somebody tying up their pants. This movement is actually called lazy about tying one's coat, and it looks like tying a bell. It is also a lot like the god Krishna putting away his flute and tying his belt in Indian dance. So what is all this mime doing in a martial art? As it turns out, the Tai Chi Chuan form tells a specific story, but it's much more than that. It's a type of theater called feng, or a canonization ritual. Canonization rituals were part of common theatrical operas like The Monkey King, The 108 Outlaws of the Marsh, and The Three Kingdoms stories. They were done at festivals as entertainment, but also to organize militias. Before battle, these canonization rituals were done to invoke gods, demons, and immortals flying up in the sky fighting, or fighting alongside the combatants, or even possessing individual soldiers. After battle, these same rituals were done to enshrine the battlefield dead so that they would not become homeless ghosts, because homeless ghosts were considered the source of future violence. The Tai Chi Chuan form begins with a movement used in Chinese opera to start the music, much like a Western conductor with a baton. Then, light and sound come into being out of Hun Tun, represented by water moving in ten directions at once. Hun Tun means totally undifferentiated chaos. It is represented on the bottom of Taoist vestments because it is how Taoist rituals begin. The next movement is called Play the Pipa. A pipa is a musical instrument that makes the sounds pi and pa. It's also the sound of bones breaking, the equivalent of the word crack in English. And it is this name for the scapula bone. The first type of writing used in China was done on sheep scapula. A question would be asked of the heavens, written on the bone, and then it would be cracked with a hot poker, 
and the answer would be read in the cracks and then written down. Thus, the peepaw would be peepod. Later, the name for a female shaman was peepaw diviner, putting together all four meanings of the word. In Taoist ritual, this is the invocation of the ancient female shaman who exists before civilization and the gods. Next, we have land rising up out of the Huntun waters, turning into Da Yu, or Yu the Great. Yu means ancestor. He's the ancestor of Chinese civilization who unifies the nine kingdoms represented by the magic square, and he stops the floods. He is half man and half bear because he married a bear. He is the male ancestor of all shaman and the original exorcist. Because he is half bear, he drags his leg and then stamps his foot to dispel yin spirits. Bian Hua, sudden transformation. He becomes Xuan Wu, the mysterious warrior, mixing the elixir of immortality and drinking it. As we explained, this is image mime of a butterfly. It is sign language for the standard theatrical expression, waking from a dream. Suddenly, waking from a dream in which Xuan Wu taught him secret martial arts techniques, immortal John Sun Fang, living on Mount Wudong, expands his Dantian in all directions and puts on his pants. He puts on his hat, which in temples dedicated to him was actually a big gong people would ring, allowing John Sun Fang to demonstrate his playful yet non-reactive nature. He then strokes his silver beard, which was the shape of a halberd blade and glistened infinitely in all directions. And he ties up his belt. The name of this movement is Lazy About Tying One's Coat. Another name for Zhang Sanfang is Zhang La Ta, which means sloppy or lazy. He steps outside. This movement is used in Chinese opera for an immortal or a god entering the stage. And what does he see? A snake, and a crane, fighting. Neither one can catch the other one. Suddenly, Zhang San Feng remembers his dream and the martial art he learned from Xuan Wu. The foundation principle of Tai Chi Chuan is that we never meet force with force. We always counterbalance it instead. This secret technique is shown by the movement Single Whip Dan Bien, which is a nautical term referring to a pole with a whipping on one end or a rope with a hook for picking baskets out of a boat. It's like a counterbalance scale. Zhang Zhengfeng was then called to the capital by the emperor and on the way, one by one, he met 100 bandits, all of whom he defeated. <laughs> Taoist priests called Dao Shi do visualizations during ritual movement, beginning with bringing light and sound into being, followed by civilization, and then the gods. Each god is a list of infinite attributes. In this case, the first god, Xuan Wu, is visualized as having skin that's infinitely deep and dark as the night sky, and armor that gleams infinitely out in all directions. He is mind making the elixir of immortality. But this process of ritual visualization with movement is in fact how Jindan, the golden elixir of immortality, is made. Whether done standing or sitting, the felt body is first emptied of all intent and then replaced by these active visualizations. In this theatrical ritual form, the body remains empty of intent during the movement, which is then driven by the spatial imagination. This particular perception-action ordering is meant to resolve our premeditated fates and return us to simplicity and spontaneity. This religious technique was used for training actors and, in fact, is how Tai Chi Chuan movement works. The god, Shen Wu, functions as an intermediary 
for approaching the Tao, the nameless totality of everything and nothing. Xuan Wu is a military figure known for extraordinary discipline. In ritual visualizations of this type, the god suddenly transforms into a more feminine god, often Lao Tzu or Lao Jun, the source of the Tao Te Ching, Taoism's most sacred text. He is surrounded by rainbows. In the Tai Chi Chuan ritual, Zhang Sun Feng plays the soft feminine role. Zhang Sun Feng lives on Mount Wudong, shrouded in mist and rainbows. His teacher is the god Xuan Wu. Zhang Sun Feng is an everyday man's immortal. A languid figure, dirty and sloppy. But he did not smell. In fact, he would scrape off his skin and make it into medicine pellets to cure sick people. He was ubiquitous before the 20th century, invoked in spirit writing trances as often as modern people use Facebook and Twitter. In some Taoist rituals, Zhang Sun Feng came to replace Xuan Wu as a martial guardian. That's probably what this canonization ritual called Tai Chi Quan was originally invented to do. The rest of the form is like Zhang Sun Feng fighting and canonizing other gods and immortals. This idea of using martial arts training to convert unruly people or demons into righteous warriors is in fact the meaning of the Chinese word Kung Fu or Gong Fu. In all the main works of martial arts literature and all the plays which have been made into movies like the Monkey King stories, the 108 Outlaws of the Marsh, and the Three Kingdoms epic, the overarching plot is that unruly demonic characters become righteous immortals, gods and heroes, through the practice of Kung Fu. This dark path to enlightenment is not that hard to comprehend. Violence changes us. It can transform our identities in both positive and negative ways hopefully making us better people, stronger, more independent, more thoughtful, more willing to help others, and empowered as leaders. The everyday comic nature of Tai Chi Chuan is a great way to keep this vision of humanity alive in our daily lives.